all right amazing okay let's go ahead uh and start we are on wednesday and there are different technical and non-technical challenges that has been delivered so far so we are going to go around the table and hear uh how was how are they going how is the progress with working on them and so what are you looking forward to, to today and we want to hear mostly mainly we want to hear the blockers what problem are you facing or did you face did you manage to work them out or would you want the technical tutors to talk about it here right now in this stand-up time so let's go ahead and of course with quick people sharp people who are ready to share you can raise your hand and then we follow the queue Okay, let's see people. There are no hands up yet. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, I can see we have two people already on the queue. Let's see many people. Let's see many people. Let's not wait to be called out. Okay, I can see we have already three. These are the same people who always share. So we need more people to be on the line. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, let's start with uh, Abdelrahman Ahmed. You can go ahead first. And then, uh, and of course, again, Hi, everyone. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, you can go ahead, Dahmet. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, I'm working uh, today on uh, task two. I'm uh, achieving good progress on this. Uh, uh, my plan today is uh, trying to complete the task two and task three. Uh, hopefully, uh, no blockers, but uh, I'm facing a uh, power cut. Uh, I hope uh, the electricity is back soon. Uh, that's all. All right, Ahmed. Okay, keep it up. Any blockers aside from the electricity? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. So you can also find a solution uh, around that issue because I've realized it's becoming a common issue because of too much rain that is in different countries. So try to find how that doesn't stop you um, from doing what you are doing. Okay, so let's continue to... Um, hmm, let's see who is on the line. Okay, Jerusalem. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so this day I was uh, working on the second task. Uh, I'm almost half done. Uh, so my plan is to continue working on it today and hopefully uh, finish it before the deadline. And I don't have any blockers yet. So. Okay, that's super amazing, Salima. Keep, uh, keep up. Keep it up. Okay, we hear from Jabez and then Kumi. Okay, so uh, I'm working on the task I'm about to finalize, but uh, I have uh, blockers on, especially on the PCA, which is the uh, dimensionality reduction. Uh, using the principal component analysis, I, I don't know if uh, I can help get help uh, on that concept. It's very hard to grasp the concept. If uh, anybody can help on that. And the other thing I was working also is to modularize my code. That is, I'm trying to uh, 
uh, cut my codes into different modules uh, for clarity. Uh, but uh, I'm sometimes having hard time to, uh, to decide where to um, modularize. So if somebody can suggest also on that. And the other, is my, the other question I have is on the dashboard. Uh, are we going to display all, everything, everything that we then on the dashboard, or are we selecting uh, some specific things, uh, some analysis uh, to display on the dashboard? And if there is any suggestion on with and how to work with the dashboard, are we going simultaneously working on the dashboard? Is it is that a good idea, or analyzing the task and try to display it on the dashboard? If I if I can get a tip on that, thank you. All right, Jabez, uh, we have Rahmet and Demtina here. Any comments? Okay. Hello. Uh, you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can. Okay, as for the dashboard, um, I mean, if you are designing something, maybe you can start the Simon Dynasty, but if you are maybe using Streamlit and you don't have plans to do much of uh, redefine the user interface, I guess when you finish the task, you can go ahead and start with the dashboard. It just depends on what kind of design you want to implement and if there's some kind of attractive design you are doing, it might get some time. So look out for the Saturday submission. It might be better to do with Simon uh, As for what we should include, uh, make sure that to include the most important things that cover what is required on the challenge document. Uh, it, I don't know, you can pick the most important information to display, to show your analysis. That's again, your understanding or your, uh, which one you should pick is up to you. That you should show the, the major analysis that you want to show for the telecom data. Um, I think I covered this one. Uh, were there any other question? Is it clear on the dashboard? Service? Uh, on the uh, PC analysis, the principal PC component analysis. analysis. Yeah. Yeah. What is the confusion there? So I'm, I think I'm you're hard saying to... it's hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, uh, having hard time to grasp the concept. I think the point is to reduce the uh, the, the dimension. Is that like uh, yeah. selecting the rows that are important, and then should we uh, do the other analysis based on that? No, it's just when you do uh, PC analysis, you are using it for plotting data, right? Yeah. Yeah. For plotting data, the data you the data you have might be much too hard. So PCA analysis has its own module that you can import it from. There's uh, from strip. I think which one was the package? I, I don't remember the package, but you can import it. It has its own package for doing PCA for plotting. And when you pass the data, it will make it, uh, it, the package will do the reduction of the data for you, the remission of the reduction. So you don't have to worry about uh, decreasing the raw data on your data set. Uh, just find the package for doing the PCA, and the package itself will do the reduction dimension, the reduction of the data without making uh, the data to lose information. Okay, so we are just only requiring to display uh, uh, using the 2D or 3D diagram? Yeah, whatever best is to so to show you work. So, what the, what, uh, what, sorry, for whatever purpose you are using the PCA, it has to show, it has to load the data without losing much information, and that, that is the purpose of PCA. It reducts the vector database, the data of your data set without uh, losing too much data, it just reduces the noises that can create much complexity. Sorry. Okay, I'm a bit of in this place, but 
uh, that is the purpose. Just reduct the data. When you pass your data to the PCA, it will reduct the dimensionality and cause it in a more sophisticated way. Uh, there are also other better uh, packages than PCA or models than PCA, which does dimensionality dimension reduction, like UMAP, which I also recommend you guys to show them and to research on. There are better ways to post your graphs just to have a clear uh, visualization for your data. So it's just it's it's, it's because it's your first time you will get used to it. Just more, read more up on PCA. Okay, thank you. Okay, amazing job, is. All right, uh, let's go ahead and hear from Daisy. Sorry, uh, before going to Daisy, let's first hear from Kumi. Okay, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and then my first concern is about um, how to modular um, the code. I think a last, I think from Yesterday, one of the tutor was advising to start by working on a notebook, and then when we realized that there is something that we are doing over and over again, we can just try to write a function that we can call later. So uh, I work on stats two and three uh, in a notebook, and then I decided to like put the function on given module a .py file and then import them so i create my working environment and then inside the folder there is a, py, a .py file called init there is a, an init file so my problem is that when i start um, trying to import the function into the notebook I'm having issue. It's not working. Like it's saying that, that there is no package or there's no model called the name of the function, something like that. And my second concern is about uh, how to call this. Now? I think there is there is some way in the technical document they were asking and they're asking to. Uh, to briefly, I think the first deliverable, like if the data set goes by, I think 10 times or 100 times, how our code is going to be here. I don't, I did not really get, like, I don't really know how to find, uh, how to determine if, how, I think the time it's going to take to run if my data set Cool. Okay, okay, me. Uh, I'm Tina. Yes. You can help? Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, do you hear me well? Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, for the first question about like uh, the problem with importing the modules, you have to make sure that you have uh, you add the path to the module to your um, uh, to your to your notebook. So you have to use uh, uh, I think it's OS or Sys uh, libraries to import the to like make sure that you have the path correctly to the module. So this is simply it can simply solve this problem. Uh, the other question I didn't hear very well. Um, can you can you repeat, Komi? Yeah, I think the second question is about how um, I think the code or how many time the code is going to take if our data set is ten times or one hundred times what we have now. Sorry, say again. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I'll say there is in the first deliverable. I think for today. Yeah. Some part they are asking how many, I think, how many times the code is going to take if the data set 
is 10 times or 100 times what we have now. Yeah. How, how can you determine that? Yeah. How can I measure that? That's the problem. I mean, you you have to measure how much time your code, uh, how much time, how, how much space, space your current code is running on your, like, on the data you have. So, currently. First, the second is, uh, this is uh, what is called the uh, space and time complexity analysis. So depending on the code, the kind of algorithms you have, the, the question is basically like if your data is much more, how will your like your algorithm, how is your code going to behave? So um, if you don't know about uh, space and time complexity, the analysis like I look this up you have to, to 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 understand what is the question here uh, let, me say. let me just write it down mm. uh, okay So basically, this is kind of what is required. Uh, and you have to do it at least for part of the code you're using. You can also look up like um, how what they're using like a, a specific pan, maybe you have using specific pandas uh, functionalities. You can look up like how do they behave basically uh, with regard to this. Okay, um, I hope that I answered your question. Uh, is, that, is, that, is my answer somewhat clear to you, Kwame? Yeah, it's clear. Okay, good. So we can continue. All right, Kumi. That's great. That is clear now. We hear from Daisy. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so yesterday I also didn't have power, but I, I went to the library and watched from there. That's how I was able to attend the sessions. And uh, so far, I have worked on task two. I'm almost done. I am left with the dimensionality reduction. So I'm glad some people have given some good pointers that I'm hoping will be helpful. Yeah, I'm also hoping to finish task three and the submissions. Yeah, that's it for me. Okay, amazing. And also, I like the way that you found solution to the electricity. So all others who are facing the same issue, I myself am facing the same issue, but I'm trying to arrange myself to go to places where they have these generators and everything. So as it's getting sorted mm -hmm. out uh, by the people in charge, let's find a solution. Let, let's be solution oriented. OK. Uh, Wandera, you, it's your floor now. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so uh, my blocker, my issue, my blocker, one of my blockers is uh, I realized um, we're being told to install Docker, and I don't know where within the project we're going to use Docker. That's my first question. And then my second question is uh, I, um, I've also realized, like from community, people are talking about SQL. So like uh, uh, converting converting the data from your SQL into a data frame. But what I did, I used SQL Alchemy, and uh, I converted my I converted I converted the file the SQL into a into a CSV, and I've been and I used that to carry out the whole what the whole EDA process. So my question is is that were we just supposed to use the um, the, the SQL file we're given, and then convert it into a data frame, and then carry out the entire process, or it was okay for us if we could just convert it into a CSV file and then do the whole process. Mm, 
Okay, Martin. Emtina? Yes. Uh, so for Docker, the use of Docker is that um, I think uh, one of the like uh, expectations from the project is to Dockerize uh, your your um, your project in the end. So that's where Docker is required. So uh, maybe if you are struggling with installing Docker now or you don't know how to use it, it is going to come up in the next uh, weeks. This is something that you have to learn. But if you are struggling with installing Docker, this is not something that you need in the beginning. You need by the end. Um, unless you want to use uh, another thing to use Docker for is that, of course, you can use Docker to run a particular um, software inside um, inside Docker instead on, on directly on your machine. And uh, I'm assuming that you know what that means. It's, it's like uh, Docker is just basically like uh, you can run um, a, a, the code in an isolated way and you don't need to like, maybe the software require, runs only, let's say, on Linux, but you have Windows, you can run a, cont a containerized version of it. So um, you don't need to install Linux or a virtual machine on your or your on your on your own machine. You just need you just run the the container basically. But uh, if you are just installing everything on your machine, uh, you don't want to use um, a container. You don't need to install Docker in the beginning. Uh, Docker will become like by the end, you can containerize your whole thing or dockerize your whole uh, software in the end. So, um, yeah, so this is step comes later on. The second question was, uh, sorry, um, I already forgot. Can you remind me? <laughs> <laughs> so the second question was, uh, I realized in the community, people are using SQL to convert it into a data frame and then carrying out the EDA process. But what I did, I used SQL Alchemy yeah. and convert it to a CSV file. Then I've been using that mm -hmm. to do task one, task three, I mean, task, task two and task three. So my question is that, is it okay for me to just convert it into a CSV and then do the whole process or should I strictly use uh, SQL? Well, that's, uh, I would say that's fine. Uh, if you like, if it's like better for you or like it's easier for you, that's fine. As long as you, you got it from, from SQL. So you did the first part uh, of like uh, interacting with, with, um, with the Postgres data, database and you, you extracted the data from there into, into a data frame and then into a CSV file. So I'd see it's fine as using it in the middle steps that's fine um we like uh the in i think in the instructions you are instructed to like if you like created um like a version of your data clean version or like you dropped some work selected some features for machine learning step we you could st install this data in also in in your database as well um okay so uh, i don't know if it's uh so i would say it's fine let's, let me just say that um it's not just like you see going on and on <laughs> is, is my answer clear to you yes yes so uh, so um after like if i you know like is there any point in time within between within the the week will i have to select data from the from the database again or i'll just use i can just use my csv file to do the whole modeling yeah okay so let me ask you what's the what is the problem what is the problem you're facing with with doing that what if you want to get data from the, the database what is the issue exactly? no, I, I'm not facing any issue because I, I never tried it out. I just converted as uh, extracted from, from Postgres to a data frame, from a data frame to a CSV. Then I, I continued. Yeah, if so you I, did that, okay. So if you did that, you can, so uh, I still don't see what is the issue exactly. So you already did that. You did the, the, the step of reading the data from the database into your, into your, file, or to your notebook basically, right? Yes. So, 
So what is the uh, what is the issue then? No, no, no. Okay, okay. It's okay. It's okay now. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. I think we can proceed with the next person. Yep, we can. Okay, Miss Steel. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello. Clear. Um, so uh, yes, we can hear you. To start with my progress, I'm working on task two in task three, and my progress seems great so far. Uh, my question was about the pre-processed or cleaned data, but uh, uh, after one year of question, I think uh, I've got my answer. Uh, so, uh, and... Hello, Mr. That was it. Uh, yes, uh, my question is already answered when Wandera asked. Uh, it was about the pre processed data, and uh, it's already answered. Okay. Uh, let's hear from Enoch. Hi, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, I have two questions. Uh, one of it is about uh, modularization of a uh, notebook file. When you modularize a notebook file, do you create like mul multiple notebook files for the different EDA tasks, or do you just create you know multiple cells for the different EDA tasks in one notebook file? Uh, this is one of my questions. And uh, the second one is that, is it uh, a good coding practice to leave uh, the code you used to view the file, like when you're doing EDA, not exactly doing analysis, but like to view the file and to view the mean and stuff like that. Do you delete that code or do you leave it in? Okay, that's it. Okay, so I think uh, uh, Yavavol have uh, told you, described for you like the best kind of organization for notebooks in the, and he introduced the channel on Monday. So I think uh, uh, his advice was, or his, like said, his requirement is that you have like um, uh, notebooks for each task, I think. Uh, so each of, each of the big tasks, I think, like um, uh, that was his advice, if I'm not wrong. So it's like uh, generally it's a matter of kind of judgment of like how big you want your notebook to be. So you don't want the, the um, you don't want your notebook to have like, for example, it is possible um, theoretically to have uh, like, or not theoretically, it's actually possible that you can r do every task in the, in the, on this challenge in just one notebook but this is not a good organization because like it's going to be so big and not going to be very understandable not very readable so it's better to break down into multiple notebooks this task and then like a use a um uh, a clear naming of the files so if you're doing like a user overview analysis in one notebook just write that in the like make that the name of the notebook itself and then uh, try to organize your notebook with uh, like you can because you can use markup basically in the notebook you can actually write down what you're doing in this section what is this and what is that the other question is about like if you use some code or like you like uh, look at the that you how to say like you use like it um, code to see the summary statistics of your data and um, for the mean and stuff like that. This is actually something useful, even if it's like um, if, if you run like some, uh, okay, 
few like politics for example the like the two columns you wanted to see the correlation between them it's got a plot and you didn't find the correlation you can leave that because it's something that you learned from so yeah you can leave that in basically if i understood i i hope that i understood correctly um yeah yeah you you, you, you understand for example there's like a dot info command line to see how many columns there are right yeah. so i yeah. leave that in right yeah you can leave that in exactly because it's something you learned from and uh and it's useful for like uh, anyone who's looking at the notebook to actually see that also as well so yeah you can leave that in exactly okay yeah. okay thank you Uh, so next, who is the next person? I think Kenok. Or is it? No, I'm done. Oh, no, sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, 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 sorry, I'm sorry. So Grace, I think. Uh. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, since Monday, I have been struggling to um, install the Docker desktop to run it. Sorry, on my system. So if I start with them, um, those um. For ZRE SQL app, I tried to install it, but it wasn't it wasn't going through. It was just showing errors. So I was advised. I dropped on the um, Slack channel. I was advised to download um, Docker. I downloaded Docker. I'm still having the same issues, and I don't know if it's possible for the um, CSV file to be given. The CSV file to be given to me to work on it while I continue trying to um, run it on my system because I have been struggling since Monday. I've had sleepless nights. I've not been able to resolve the issue and I don't want to have to not submit anything when um, I'm asked to submit. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I was speaking with my mic muted. Um, uh, so yeah, I have seen your your uh, your messages on the Slack, and I know it's a frustration. But I guess uh, I know it's it's of course it is uh, not a frustration. But I also I know the uh, that that uh, like uh, you're anxious to like do complete the task themselves and to submit. And uh, having errors when you're anxious is 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 not easy to to deal with. But you're using Windows, and I think uh, some of your colleagues are also using Windows. Have any one of you, like, let me I just ask everyone, have any one of you managed to install Postgres directly on their Windows machine without using Docker? Uh, if someone, yeah. So Sheila saying yes. Uh, anyone else? Uh, can you help Grace to do that? Because let me just make this comment about Docker. Docker is very useful and you will need it in the future. But uh, Docker is a bit um, resource intensive sometimes if your machine is really doesn't is really weak in a sense, uh, it might be a problem for you to install. So I had this issue I was using like um, uh, I, I had this issue before in a, on a laptop that wasn't really high in high specification, so I couldn't install Docker on it, uh, on Windows. Um, so, okay, another thing that when you want to install Docker, you already have to install WSL, uh, okay? So using WSL alone, you can, like, because you have, by having uh, installing WSL on your Windows machine, you can also ha use um, Linux on your machine, and you can install Doc. Uh, sorry, Postgres there, just like on on Linux directly. Installing Postgres should be simple. So this one suggestion. Another suggestion is to get help from your colleagues to install Postgres directly on Windows. I would say leave Docker for now. Probably I'm just guessing that your machine is not capable of running Docker on Windows right now. So leave that for now. Try to get help from your from your colleagues. I think there. Uh, and if uh, things uh, don't work out by like today's afternoon, 
um get back to me we can we can like uh maybe or when well, maybe one of your colleagues can give you like a csv file to deal with uh if you really want to like uh, do some of the tasks but like try for now be patient because you will need all of this stuff later on so even if you circumvent the problem now it's not going to be good for you in the future so um i hope that like you got what i'm what i was like that what i'm what i said like i i said multiple stuff like i suggested multiple yes. things so, okay yes i i i got that but my laptop is an hd gram quite fine so i've checked online and it seems to be a fit but i would um hopefully sorry. i can get some again, what is, what, sorry, say, say, say the specifications again sorry um, eight gig RAM and um, Core i5 Windows. Okay, so yeah, so you have eight gig a gig. Uh, um, we should be able to run that, but okay. Uh, I don't know. So, um, it might be some uh, some other thing that is causing the problem. I don't know really. Cannot really tell from. It's probably just some some errors with installation. You might need to just. Uh, delete everything and then try to reinstall but um, i've done that three times <laughs> okay uh all right yeah well sorry which which windows you're using um 10 10. so yes. uh yeah the same one i'm using anyway by the um, end you yeah you might uh, struggle so much that by the end you will you would you choose to install Linux directly on your machine instead of Windows because Windows is always a headache. Uh, but okay, just like uh, try to do the suggestions. Either if you have WSL already installed and working on your machine, you just forget about Docker, forget about installing uh, it directly on your machine and just try to use the Linux inside this virtual machine. Um, um another thing is that you get help from your uh for your colleagues to 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 install postgres directly on your windows so these are two that you can try today okay thank you thank you very much problem uh yeah i hope it works <laughs> it works out yes um yeah by the way uh, when you write a, this is general thing not only for grace for for you, if you having if when you have blockers like this, you have a report today to submit, right? So even if you don't manage to like do all the tasks because you face some blockers, in your report you can you report the blockers you you faced and how you overcome them if you have none or what is the thing you tried, maybe like uh, not necessarily in full details, but like you can you can actually report on that. That is a very good thing to do in a report. Especially the one like on Wednesday, because the one on Wednesday is more about how you're progressing toward the objective. So you can include the blockers there, the challenges you're facing, and even like uh, what you plan to do in the future. And then, like, if you're anticipating problems also in the future, you can also um, write that down in your report. These are all good things to report on. Um, okay, so we can move on to the first thing, next person. I think Hillary. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good morning. And um, for me, I've been able to 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 work on task two and three. And uh, so far, the blockers I had were, were resolved um, uh, the other day about Postgres, and uh, I was able to move on by installing Docker for me. But uh, I'm using Linux, so um, I've been trying to assist on the windows problem but uh i'm not sure and uh I've, for task three the thing is uh i'm working on k-means clustering and uh for the visualization um I, I, i've been getting like straight lines trying to plot the values uh dots that form like a straight line and, and, and i don't know how to interpret them like i don't know how it i don't know if that is a cluster or something and and also, uh, and, uh, my, my other question is to is on the interim we have to submit uh, about the data structures. The 
it, uh, we are being told if you use Panda scikit-learn, uh, report on the data structure and part of those packages. So does that mean if I'm using scikit-learn, let's say uh, the specific one for data transform transformation, do I comment on that specifically or the entire scikit-learn? And for pandas, uh, something do I comment? Do I comment on the entire use of the pandas in my in my file and how and how they they can and how their their usages? Um, thank you. Okay, for the first question, are you talking about the the plot for where you are trying to uh, to figure out which is the the optimal value for k in the k mean clustering? Is this a, is a is this a plot you are talking about? Um, yes, it, uh, yeah, so I plotted first to see how the data look like before doing the k-means and I am finding like straight lines, like dots that form nearly are straight lines and there are several of them. And when I do the clustering, I get a, I'm supposed to have a, something like an elbow. Yeah. But um, I'm getting some little curves and I don't know which one to pick as the, as the value of the k-means. Yeah, so if there, that, there are too yeah. many Yes. Okay, all right. So they are, that is a possibility to get, of course. Um, the, so you can actually look up like what to do in that case, basically. But uh, that means that there is no clear optimal value for K um, in that case. So as long as it's, it's like in decreasing, you want to just um, to choose uh, like, um, if you are getting some kind of a curve, it's not a clear elbow. That means like um, a, a couple of values are going to be like uh, equally optimal or equally not uh, super optimal, but okay. Yes, you have to choose one of them. You can just actually comment on that. Like since we are, I'm not seeing a clear elbow. That means I can, I'm not going to be um, the choice to to make which one is the optimal is not clear. So you can actually write that. And uh, I make your choice based on that. So, but yeah, yeah it's not a guarantee that you'll get an elbow, of course. Um, and the yeah. other. Question? Yeah, oh, thank you. I have one more question, kindly. Um, yeah, sorry. I, okay, go ahead. Okay, for, for the. So, I've been working on my notebook first and getting the idea and the task first. So, it, what, what do you recommend? The, what would be put on the modular script? Like what? What part of code? The pipeline or the preprocessing? Uh, what I've been able to do is to get the database to be reusable in our file. I don't know what else put there. Uh, so you could think um, about like if you get this like similar data to what you have right now, and you wanted to do a similar analysis, which part of it? which part of code you can simplify your life by having it like in a file and then you can just copy paste that to, to your to your the next um, to, your, to your next repo that's what I'm saying try to say so for example I'll give you an example like some uh, easy functions to modularize or like is, is simplify your life is to realize the plotting uh, functions because you always like you can like input as parameters to so these functions, just the column or the data frame, and then you can produce the, um, the plots. Uh, like if you're doing any particular like kind of uh, cleaning, uh, you can also modularize that functions. That maybe you can take a column and produce for you like um, replace. I don't know. I like I, I I'm, I'm imagining what you have done in your code, but yeah. There are much, like when you are using a notebook, a lot of it is like a kind of uh, you. You might not be like modularizing all of uh, like a, a, a significant part of the code in your notebook, uh, but uh, like anything that is you think you can reuse, you can simplify your life by 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 putting on like a different script that do that. So I cannot really give you. Uh, more examples really. You cannot really think of more than Anyway, I hope that I answered. All right, good. Uh, next person, uh, Abu Bakr. Uh, okay. Uh, so, 
the first thing I would like to say, I would like to start from the blockers because the past two days uh, I've been a little bit ill. So uh, my progress was a little, uh, was rather slow. So I think I'm trying to catch up for today's deliverable. Uh, but I actually got started on Monday and try to uh, analyze the streamlit the streamlit uh, code. So uh, I think I have got uh, uh, some insight from there, and I'm trying to implement on my notebooks. So I think most of the uh, questions have been touched by Hillary. Uh, so. Uh, on the case of modularization, I think uh, I'm trying to also have uh, the floats and for pre-processing different packages or different classes for every single one of them. Uh, for example, to process outliers, I think that is what I have been doing. So on the analysis part, I have. Uh, made some pro progress from importing to from uh, the SQL. Uh, the question I have is, actually, I want to point out that I'm working on Windows and Postgres is, I think, working fine for me. Uh, I actually didn't dockerize it. So <clears throat> my question is, uh, <clears throat> after I finished the pre-processing, I exported the CSV file. So, uh, how how do you think that uh, I should pipeline uh, from pre-processing outlines and to actual data analysis? Like, I want to get an understanding about that. How you want us to do? How we it is done properly? So okay. Um... Sorry. So if pre -process, uh, after pre-processing, the next step for you is going to be using some kind of machine learning modeling, right? Um, I mean, uh, okay. I'm not actually, I think, I, I don't understand the question right correctly. Can you, can you rephrase maybe? So, <coughs> sorry. Uh, so, what I'm trying to say is, we are tasked to create a pipeline. I just want to understand how is that expected to be done. I guess I just want more explanation on that. Um, okay. So, uh, so it, the data you have, like uh, after, like you have cleaned it already and you did the pre-processing on it. Uh, so is it, like, is it actually ready to be imported into like a machine learning algorithm or you still have to do some kind of like transformations, maybe scaling or like uh, standardization or normalization. There are like uh, steps that you can take, uh, can do. And um, I think in Sky Kit Learn, if you can, um, I could learn uh, there is this pipeline functionality that where you can like add the step of the like uh, the like the pre-processing and then this like uh, any transformation you do on the data and then the training or the using the machine learning model all like in a pipeline so you can add them together let's uh, see if like uh, just like a source for that. Give me, give me a second. Um, um, so if someone else has a question, yes, I will come. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, so uh, what, what, let me keep you on the loop what I've been doing. So I try to, on my first package, I try to actually pre-process it. So pre-processing like EDA and everything, uh, cleaning. So after that, I uh, I also 
did the outliers so fixing the outliers and everything so uh, like i want to understand like after, is that from pre-processing to outliers what we call pipelining or from uh, the cleaned one into the modeling like what you said like using scikit-learn and all, any package on that modeling for modeling uh, so yes step. <coughs> okay so the pipeline is something that if you like kind of automate all of this like you can have this uh, like you can do this manually of course you can take the data can pass it through all of these steps that you're going to do from the cleaning to the like transforming to like when you do like a, a split into train and test and does do the actual training all of that you can do like separately but you can also use this pipeline functionality basically by adding all of these steps together kind of in, in what is it called actually in this car is circuit learn is called the pipeline can just look that up uh how how to how to use that so that's what we want it's kind of like an automation kind of uh, um it's like it's an automation process in a sense uh because instead of going through these steps manually you just pass like like you put them in a sense that it's going to be ready to be used by if you have like if tomorrow we give you like uh, data from from this teleco company for another month so some new data and we tell you like do the same thing instead of like uh, going through it manually you just apply this pipeline to them and then they to their new data and you can do that like in one step instead of to go through all the steps um uh, manually so this is the goal in a sense uh, is that clear in, I mean, I'm just saying a general idea. But, uh, I think, uh, okay, good. Um, all right. Uh, I will maybe I will find like some resource to do this uh, and and link it in Slack. I think yes, uh, because here we're running out of time. And uh, okay. Any other questions, or otherwise we have to end this session. Yes, Hilary, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Um, my question is uh, about. Uh, so since I'm using Postgres to, I'm just uh, loading the data directory from uh, from Postgres to a data frame. Uh, where, where do I need to use a, a, a CSV? maybe i can save my features to postgres and then export them later to csv when i'm when i'm deploying to streamlet uh, is that okay yeah i think uh, is i think where you need uh, people have been saying that they are like, using csv just because maybe it's more convenient for them or like it's like uh, it's something that they understand better but what where you will need you can actually completely just use the, the database just from database to your Python all the way. But I think when it comes to using the dashboard by the end, you will need to export your like your data into a CSV file to to upload it to the streamlet. Um, I this is what like yeah, was saying like in the um, on Monday. So that is the step where you need you might need to actually use CSV file. Otherwise, all these other steps you don't need you don't need that. Okay, great. Um, uh, so let's go. So there are multiple people who said that they're using Postgres on Windows. So please help Grace on Slack um, to figure out her problem. And uh, otherwise, let's end the session. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And uh, yeah, any other questions? Oh, we're on Slack. We can continue the discussion there. Okay. Um, let me.